can i start with if you could throw certain, some light on what this project is how did you conceptualize this idea and what's the future holding for something of this sort yeah thank you first of all uh, thank you for your kind words uh, i think uh, this is a phenomenal project and uh, it's actual actually showcases what is mumbai going to be in the future and uh, actually i must congratulate this wonderful group called team the tech entrepreneurs association of mumbai who have created this wonder i would say it's a wonder which they have created and it will put mumbai ahead of every megapolis so thank you members of team in fact when i met them there was a lot of discussion on how the infrastructure is being created in mumbai what people are facing because of the construction how to approach people how to make them part of your development story and from there this idea came up that can we create a metaverse platform where every single mumbai car or for that matter anybody can actually be part of this development story this growth story in mumbai we have been investing a lot into infrastructure mumbai is changing but people normally cannot see how it is changing they only experience the traffic jams because of construction the pollution because of construction and at this juncture i must thank all the mumbaikers for their patience because mumbaikers know that mumbai is changing so they have been suffering but not complaining the way any other citizen from any other city would do and this wonderful group of team they told me that we can create this platform where using the immersive technologies we can actually give the experience to people how the city is changing now our coastal road is uh, under construction hopefully part of it will inaugurate this month or next month but how it was made how 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 it looks what is the experience now with this metaverse platform on your mobile on the website and also we are creating uh, you know 14 booths where uh, with the use of uh, uh, virtual reality you can actually experience you can you can actually navigate you can actually play with uh, with with uh, these projects so i mean if you look at uh, uh, with the coastal road or the metro 3 which is asia's biggest underground metro single line which is in the last phase of construction how it is going to change your lives i can just see that a construction is going on where i stay but what's actually happening so i can actually get a real feel of how mumbai is transforming the new mumbai airport how it's going to be uh, you know seen after the, the airport is there so today four major projects are put on this platform eight major projects will be put on this platform very soon and also gradually all the future projects we will put on this platform so every mumbai car can experience the future mumbai how it will look how it will feel and how he is going to navigate in mumbai i also think that it's not a mere game or or a mere feeling but this is a very interactive platform where actually we can interact with the people we can take the suggestions of the people and in future i think this is the platform of future where all the infrastructure of mumbai can be put on this platform and all the developmental activities of mumbai can be experienced on this platform and i see a day when even the bmc uses this platform to 
actually you know uh, give approvals to the building plan it's absolutely possible that using this platform the entire planning process can be put on this platform and anybody it will bring so much of transparency that anybody can really see whether the construction is going on as per the sanction whether the sanction is right whether they are doing the right thing so i think this is absolutely something which is wonderful which has happened to mumbai and i would like to appeal to all the mumbaikers that you may download it on your mobile but go to one of our booths we are creating 14 and just experience via virtual reality and you will find it something out of the world so there are quite a few projects and infrastructure projects that are going on in maharashtra mumbai alone gives about 250 billion dollars to maharashtra's gdp if you could also talk about your vision for mumbai uh, you know what are the different infrastructure projects we know a few that are going on but uh, you know in our last meeting you were also mentioning few that are uh, you know that are that you are waiting to be green lit uh, you were in japan recently uh you know where you were able to also raise certain funds if you could kind of throw some light on you know what are the other different projects that are supposed to be uh, uh, that that you are planning to launch and what's the overall vision for mumbai uh, see uh, in 2014 when i i took over as cm i was just wondering uh, what is the thing uh, that mumbai is lacking why why there is so much talk about bangalore and why there is so much talk about hyderabad and these cities uh, are being portrayed and you know after discussion with uh, uh, many entrepreneurs and uh, business people i could understand that mumbai has become congested mumbai has become unaffordable mumbai is a island city there there's not much land available and uh, the biggest thing which i was told is that was that mumbai lacks infrastructure for 15 years in the new millennium for first 15 years we did not invest in mumbai infrastructure we we actually uh, uh, did not create new uh, highways uh, new uh, bridges uh, no new infrastructure was created uh, the metros just one metro we created for uh, you know 11 kilometers which took around 11 years to build so i thought that this is a time when we invest more in infrastructure and uh, you know there were uh, two opinions amongst our bureaucrats one opinion was let's invest gradually another opinion was to take a quantum jump and we decided that if we really want to make mumbai a city of future a city of dreams we have to take a quantum jump and when i talk of mumbai it's not just mumbai it is mmr region which is the driving force of indian economy and so i decided that let's take a quantum jump i told my people that let's conceive the projects i said capital money investment is secondary if we have good projects investment will come and i'm very happy to share that we started projects worth 30 billion dollars between 2015 and 2019 and we started transforming mumbai now we have just uh, inaugurated this atal setu atal setu is something which is going to actually transform mumbai because it's a 22 km sea bridge one of the longest sea bridge ever built in india and it has connected mumbai to new mumbai now what it means now it means that mumbai has added a land mass which is thrice mumbai thrice of mumbai three times of mumbai so a entirely new mumbai will be created in this part which will be the third mumbai we have a mumbai we have a new mumbai and this will be third mumbai where our airport is also there and now i think the space constraint and unaffordability of mumbai is gone because of this one atal setu and i think huge investment will come there and it is also uh, you know data center capital of india because the 65% india's data center capacity is in that area it is in new mumbai which is now totally connected to mumbai in 20 minutes 
you will be able to reach mumbai secondly what we created we created a loop for mumbai now with the coastal road you have a connectivity uh, up to uh, varli from varli there is a varli bandra ceiling from bandra the bandra varsova ceiling is there from varsova we are creating one more ceiling up to uttan from uttan we are creating a ceiling up to virar from virar to alibag we have a corridor and from there that corridor is connected to our uh, atal setu so entire ring is been created around mumbai now our dream that in mumbai the mobility should be such that anyone who is traveling in mumbai should reach any destination within 59 minutes and i'm sure that's going to happen let me tell you it took 11 years to create 11 kilometers of metro and we started building 375 kilometers of metro in just 3 years and out of which 50 kilometers is complete this year again 50 kilometers will dedicate next year again 50 kilometers will dedicate and in next 3 to 4 years the entire 375 kilometers of metro network will be operational and what does it mean see today the lifeline of mumbai is uh, is our our local train our suburban railway our suburban railway carries 9 million passengers every day now this metro will carry 9 million more so we are actually doubling the capacity with very sustainable model and very uh, you know which gives ease of living so i think the projects like uh, like this railway or the the new mumbai airport which hopefully the mumbai will get its new airport by end of this year so by maybe october the new mumbai airport will start and i am sure this just one airport has capacity to add 1% to our gdp and i think that is going to absolutely transform the entire mumbai so all these projects now we are creating uh, uh, some tunnels the east west connectivity of mumbai is also uh, you know very important so whether is a thane borivali connector there are lot of connections which we are creating which are underground tunnels and recently we have actually uh, you know encountered a technology where we can create twin tunnels in a tunnel a metro can also go and also the same tunnel can be used for uh, you know mobility of cars and and buses we have we are also building those twin tunnels so i think mobility wise mumbai will be entirely a different city in next 5 years it will be ahead of every other city it will be ahead of bengaluru it will be ahead of hyderabad it will be ahead of delhi it will be ahead of chennai every single city you know uh, you were talking about the infrastructure project and coastal road uh, came up uh, is there a date that you have in mind where the coastal road would actually be open for the public this is the editor <laughs> <laughs> he wants a breaking news <laughs> So hopefully uh, uh, very soon uh, we have not decided the date and this would be from uh, uh, so the first what? phase would be up yeah. to haji ali yeah 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 uh, we can open that okay. absolutely uh, you were all, you also mentioned uh, bangalore and uh, delhi you know the highest number of startup registrations happen in maharashtra but the largest amount of vc funding actually lands up happening in bangalore bangalore and in delhi how do we make this change you know one obvious reason is that the cost of living in mumbai is extremely high so while they start up from mumbai or in maharashtra they finally land up moving to the other cities how can we the wealth creation continues how do we make sure that the wealth creation continues to stay within our own state uh, so you are absolutely right uh, that has happened in the past but still i must tell you that uh, normally when we talk about startup ecosystem uh, bengaluru is is boasted as a startup capital sometimes hyderabad is also boasted as a, a very good startup ecosystem but uh, i think if you look at uh, actual reality in the numbers maharashtra is a startup capital the highest number of startups which are functional 
I'm not talking about those who have moved to Bengaluru. The highest number of startups which are functional are in Maharashtra. And the highest number of unicorns, I mean, out of all the uh, registered startups in India, 20% are housed in, uh, in Maharashtra and 25% of the unicorns are also uh, housed in Maharashtra. So we are the startup capital and, uh, you know, ultimately the future of uh, uh, startup ecosystem is also uh, AI, it's also technology. And now with uh, the capacity of data center which we have created or, or the ecosystem which has been created, I think this entire future belongs to Mumbai. And, and, and you, you, have, you have rightly said that, uh, you know, Mumbai had become unaffordable. That's why people uh, actually shifted to other cities. But now we are making Mumbai affordable. And once Mumbai becomes affordable, I think it's a city of dream. Nobody wants to move out of Mumbai. In fact, people want, want to come to Mumbai. And let me tell you, we have planned something with this wonderful group called team who really represent Mumbai. And I'm sure that will bring back the position of Mumbai. We'll, we'll bring it back. And I, I must also tell you that uh, uh, Maharashtra was the first state in 2016, uh, we came up with the startup policy. We also uh, came up with a startup fund. And now we are pushing, uh, uh, you know, the hard to create a new startup ecosystem. We are actually renewing our startup uh, uh, policy. And I'm sure it will make it most attractive in our country. So I think the future of startups belong to Maharashtra. There's another issue. Uh, one is the cost of living. The second is also the perception that the technology, all the tech companies are out of Karnataka or out of Delhi. We often hear that Maharashtra is pitching for an automobile company to come to Maharashtra. We will a lot of times hear that the government has approached maybe a manufacturing plant, a chip manufacturing plant to come to Maharashtra. But what we don't hear is about a tech park. You know, there's recently, it was there in the news that Google is actually building their largest office outside US in Hyderabad. How can we change that perception? Are there any efforts that are being taken where the government is approaching the large tech companies like Amazon or Google or any of the other big ones to open up their tech parks in Maharashtra? Uh, yeah, of course. In fact, um, I must tell you that uh, the biggest investment of Amazon data center is in, in, uh, in Maharashtra. And uh, actually, I, I still remember that uh, uh, we had negotiated it with them and, and they started it. And, and recently, I, I went to Pune uh, to Google and we have entered into a MOU with Google. Uh, we will be partnering with them in, in artificial intelligence. We are creating a center of excellence in artificial intelligence uh, with the Google. And I think uh, uh, when we partner uh, with Google and when this MOU was happening, uh, the country head of Google, he told me that now is the time when we will pitch Pune as the tech city. And uh, he said we came to Pune and Pune is our fastest building business in the entire uh, you know, history of, of India. So today, not just Mumbai, but Pune is tech capital. In fact, Many times Pune is overshadowed because of Mumbai. But you name the technology company or they are present in Mumbai and Pune. They are, they, are, they are present in Pune. And it's not just Pune today. You can see technology companies in Nagpur as well. You can see technology companies in, in uh, some tier 2, tier 3 cities in, in Maharashtra. So I think uh, uh, we have experienced a lot of technology investments in, in, in Maharashtra in the past. But in the future, I think uh, we, we can see many more. And as government, we have been in active talks with all the technology giants to, you know, offer them uh, good facilities. They don't require anything from the government. They just require some good governance, which, of course, we are committed to give. So you'll, be, you'll see, uh, you know, many investments in technology. If I tell you who is coming, it's a very competitive market. My competitors will chase them. So I'll not tell you who is coming, but let me tell you 
there are if you could three, just hint us to there are that. two three very big technology companies who are coming to maharashtra lovely so a lot of the technology entrepreneurs sitting over here have created immense wealth for the country honorable prime minister narendra modi ji also has put out an economic goal of 5 trillion dollars and obviously this goal cannot be achieved without maharashtra progressing at the same speed what steps are being taken specifically on the economic side to build maharashtra also so that it can add to the 5 trillion dollar goal see we we mooted this idea of making maharashtra trillion dollar economy uh 1 trillion dollar 1 trillion dollar economy and uh, i think uh, uh, we sincerely believe that if india has to be 5 trillion then the states like maharashtra have to perform they have to become a, a trillion dollar economy and and to to chart the road map for trillion dollar economy uh, we created one economic advisory council uh, this eac was actually headed by uh, mr n chandrashekharan uh, who is head of uh, tata, tata sons and 20 top ceos uh, from diverse fields uh, were roped in and for months together they have actually worked hard they interacted with every section of the society they virtually went into uh, every single district and every single strata and then they created one uh, a report and this first report of economic advisory council has been uh, actually submitted to the state government it's a wonderful report see uh, in any case by business usual maharashtra can become a trillion dollar uh, economy by 2031 32 will be passing half a trillion mark very soon uh, this year itself but we can become uh, a trillion dollar economy but we want to advance it we want to make maharashtra a trillion dollar economy uh, by 2029 20, and this entire uh, eac report Uh, is focused on how to uh, make maharashtra a trillion dollar economy and now we have also created our own maharashtra avatar of uh, niti aayog which is uh, uh, maharashtra institute for transformation mitra mitra has been given the responsibility to uh, do the implementation of this report and all the stakeholders have been brought together and i am very sure that uh, uh, with with this focus strategy also the focus is not just uh, you know we can reach the trillion dollar uh, economy mark just by investing more in mmr region because it's the fastest growing region but that will create a huge disparity in the state so our focus is a sectoral focus where we are actually uh, also uh, creating uh, you know opportunities in districts those districts which have been left out are also being brought into uh, the main fold and we have created a, a strategic plan investment plan for every district in fact we have been investing in every district but i think it was not focused on creating jobs on creating infrastructure on on creating livelihood opportunities now it is uh, it's a strategy where we'll be doing it more so that uh, the investment is 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 a is is a investment which will actually create a value and wealth and i think with this focused approach and of course use of technology is very important because today uh, all of us know that technology is 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 a enabler which can actually it's it's a force multiplier it can uh, you know leap frog you so using the technology we are trying to make uh, maharashtra a trillion dollar economy by by uh, 28 29 in fact our cagr has been uh, 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 nearly 10 for last uh, uh, 10 years barring the covid years because in the covid years of course we had negative growth so i think it's it's absolutely possible and and we have started working on it the technology as a leap frog there was a very interesting line you mentioned uh, in one of the interviews uh, with lokmat that technology would be the only way to improve governance and reduce corruption has that actually come into place even as the chief minister or deputy chief minister has that really become part of the government uh, you know if there are any examples of how you use technology to improve governance for your uh, cabinet i think uh, this mantra of tech led governance has been given by our honorable prime minister uh, shri narendra modi ji who by creating a trinity of uh, uh, mobile aadhar uh, and you know dbt he actually transformed the way 
uh, you know we used to deliver our services today we have a impeccable record of service delivery without corruption because of use of technology i'll just tell you one example in maharashtra when i took over as as chief minister uh, we encountered uh, one scholarship scam what was this scam now we we give scholarships to various uh, 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 people from uh, you know marginalized society and uh, the ghosts were created so those people who actually took the scholarship those teachers and those children they were never existed sure. only their names i mean i don't know even amitabh bachchan would have got a scholarship in one of the registers so that was a case so we we actually uh, started you know uh, using the uh, digital intervention and we started dbt we actually brought uh, every single student uh, uh, on dbt platform we uh, actually uh, uh, made their aadhar cards compulsory uh, and uh, with those aadhar accounts we started giving uh, you know money directly into those accounts so for, uh, at the first instance all the ghost accounts were taken off but then we uh, actually encountered a very uh, you know typical situation where the colleges or the principal uh, they they came to us and they said it's good that you are giving uh, all the money in their accounts but now the problem is that uh, you know uh, they are using that money elsewhere and they are not paying the fees and uh, when we tell them that you pay the, your fees uh, you know they start agitating now this was one more problem so again we uh, resorted to technology and we created a wallet for every single student with a you know intervention that money goes to his account but he can only pay to the college if he doesn't pay to the college money comes back to the government and the entire scholarship scam was over and it was such a transparent system by which uh, uh, you know we we are able to uh, give the scholarship so we did it in around 300 government schemes 300 government schemes were actually uh, brought on end to end digital platform where anybody can access those uh, schemes sitting at the home and there is no inter because we know that uh, you know technology uh, is is a leveler it's a, it's 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 actually uh, doesn't recognize whether it is rishi or whether it is uh, devendra actually everybody is in virtual queue first in first out so i think technology is something which actually uh, you know brings lot of transparency it it brings lot of efficiency and that's what we could bring our our war room which we created uh, it was a concept where every single project was tracked through technology and not just tracked but all the stakeholders were brought on a single table so you know for for a project which used to get approval in let's say 3 years started getting approval in 3 months so i think this use of technology has changed the way we used to govern and i'm sure that uh, i mean i'm not satisfied as yet there are many things uh, we we need to do but every day that is changing now today with the use of ai lot of governance will change we are trying to use ai for social good and uh, i think uh, in days to come there will be a rapid change in how we govern i've seen actually the war room it's uh, beautiful costumes here i've uh, yeah. seen how costume he, uh, has been uh, responsible for the war room yeah, for many I've years i've seen quite a few projects the way the war rooms actually continuously uh, looking at these projects we are now going to open it to the uh, public for q and a uh, you know we are running short on time but maybe two odd questions if uh, anybody wants to one or two questions maybe so can we have the mics uh, I, i thought you wanted to ask a question <laughs> hello so very good afternoon to you Uh, as a proud mumbai car it's great to see that you know uh, mumbai has transformed into the city that we would all love to live in the uh, infrastructure is getting better our women are safer digital adoption is across the streets and um, just wanted to check with you like what are the initiatives that we will be undertaking uh, in terms of tech to make the city greater i could not hear you in terms of what was the last line the tech initiatives that we will be undertaking to make mumbai greater yeah i think uh, uh, 
as I have mentioned that uh, with this Trans Harbor link, we have got extended Mumbai. And we are building this extended Mumbai on few themes. And one of the theme will be a technology-based theme. We want to create an entire smart city, which is technology-based, where we want to look at all the technology businesses. We'll, we want to create entire ecosystem for all tech-based businesses. And we have already started planning for that. Thank Sir, you. We've got one more question. One last Your, question. One last question. We've got somebody in the front row. If, uh, Uh, hello, sir. My name is Sai. Uh, I'm here to represent Metaverse 911, a company on the Metaverse consulting space. And uh, I flew down from Hyderabad for, just for this event. Uh, and uh, on the on the standpoint of uh, the uh, Megapolis Metaverse, uh, how do you think uh, edu uh, uh, education will be impacted, like uh, education industry will be impacted? Are there any initiatives in terms of uh, making uh, VR uh, education uh, uh, more, more uh, user friendly, wherein I think uh, where Metaverse is lacking right now is user adaption. I think what are the initiatives uh, uh, are being taken on this front? I think uh, that's a very good question because uh, you see, uh, the biggest benefit of technology is in the field of education and healthcare. Today, you know, we cannot take best of the educators. Uh, to travel to the rural areas or best of the doctors to travel to the rural areas. But actually using technologies, we can bring them closer to, uh, you know, these experts. That's what we have started. So uh, uh, the initiative of smart classrooms or smart ITIs. Uh, now in, in, in Mumbai, with, with the help of Access Bank, we have created a very beautiful uh, uh, tool room for ITIs. And we have actually uh, joined all the uh, ITIs to this tool room and uh, based on you know digital intervention all these uh, uh, new technologies can be transformed transferred to the students who are sitting in their ITIs in their respective uh, uh, you know cities or villages so i think education is something where this entire it revolution and ai revolution is going to change you know uh, the, the entire space and we are actually uh, leveraging on, on these changes. You know, we've got a last segment, Devendraji. We've got a fun, uh, quick fire round for you. Uh, let me tell you that these questions haven't been shared with Devendraji. So let's see how fast he can actually reply. And uh, so the first question, uh, obviously, all the questions have been around technology, Mumbai, Maharashtra. Uh, we've had a very good political uh, round just a few days back. So I'm keeping my questions to this. Digital watch or analog watch? I don't use watch. <laughs> I only use mobile. And Android or iOS? Of course, <laughs> iOS. Of course, iOS. So who's the most savvy political leader you've come across? I think it's uh, our Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi ji because he, he uses absolutely every technology in the meaningful way. Absolutely every technology. You know, your favorite infrastructure project in Mumbai, Coastal Road, Mumbai Metro, or the Atal Setu? Oh, it's very difficult to choose, but uh, uh, I would say that Atal Setu has been an engineering marvel. But as the underground metro comes, it will be another engineering marvel. And, and the biggest engineering marvels will be our, uh, you know, tunnels, which will connect uh, uh, east and west part of Mumbai. Uh, w which project of these would have the biggest impact in Mumbai? Every, every, every single project. But I think the biggest impact, I would always say, will be uh, the Atal Setu, the Trans Harbor Link. Mumbai Chha Vada Pao or Nagpur Chi Tari Poha? Of course, Nagpur Chha Tari Poha. <laughs> <laughs> Who's more tech savvy? Your daughter Divija, wife Amruta Ji, or yourself? Of course, Divija. I mean, uh, you know, this generation uh, is born with technology. So they are always ahead of us. I mean, we have to learn a lot from them. So if I, I encounter any problem using technology, I go to her. So technology advice you seek from your daughter? Yeah, yeah, I do. Any example, like <laughs> anything that you went for the last time, that the government's in problem, can you help us with? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not that way, but she advises me about, uh, you know, my social media platforms and what I should do and what I should not do. Okay. Uh, 
Any new gadget that you recently used which you thought was mind-blowing? The VR which we recently I used, it's, it's for the such metaverse. a, yeah, yeah, for the metaverse, it's such a gadget. I mean, you actually, you are there. You are there. It's, it's wonderful. Human intelligence or artificial intelligence? Human intelligence will always precede artificial intelligence. You see, artificial intelligence is a tool. It's like a horse which you have to ride. So if you are confident, then your horse cannot betray you. If you are not confident, then your horse will, you know, carry you to, to some place and then it will make you fall. So I think the human intelligence will always precede. Thank you so much, Devendra Ji, for Thank taking you. our time and giving us Thank this you. interview.